production on other programs are in limbo now as TV and movie writers officially go on strike. KCAL News reporter Tina Patel is live outside the Netflix building in Hollywood where WGA members will be picketing later today. Tina. Good morning. We haven't seen any of those union members out here yet, but we are expecting there to be thousands of members outside this studio and studios all across town later this afternoon. What we don't know is how long there could be picket lines. It's not clear when the writers and studios will return to the negotiating table. On strike, shut it down. This is the video from the last time there was a writer strike. That was back in 2007, and that strike lasted for 100 days. Now, the WGA did not want to repeat history, but they say what they're dealing with now is an existential crisis. The rise of streaming platforms has changed the entertainment industry, and the union says studios are making money. They're not giving writers their share. That's why they are now on strike. The Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers, which represents the major studios, says they offered the Writers Guild a proposal with increases in compensation, improvements in streaming resi residuals. But in a statement last night, they said the primary sticking points are mandatory staffing and duration of employment, guild proposals that would require a company to staff a show with a certain number of writers for a specified period of time, whether needed or not. Here's the reaction from some who rely on the industry to work. What's frustrating is that we just came off of a, of a great rebound from COVID year and momentum was moving forward. And then something that's completely out of our control like this happens. Yeah, a lot of people affected by this strike. Now, it officially started at 12.01 a.m., which means writers can no longer work on any scripts. So daily productions, things like late-night talk shows, they are going to be the first that are going to be affected. And we have reaction from some of the late-night talk hosts. We'll tell you about what they're saying in our next half hour. Right now, we'll send it back to you. All right, Tina, thank you for that. And we do want to talk more about how the strike will be felt across Southern California. Michael Schneider from Variety is joining us now. Michael, thanks so much for being with us this morning. We appreciate it. Um, we know that writers will hit the picket lines in a matter of hours. They can't write anymore. However, they can still produce. They can direct. We can see those types of uh, them getting back to work that way. But you're talking about 11,500 people. Do we expect the studios to try to work to reach a deal quickly here? The last strike was 100 days. What do we see this time? I mean, there is that hope that maybe uh, this will not uh, last as long as the last one, but both sides are so far. Uh, you know, they're, they're, there's a huge divide right now, and it's looking like this may last longer than expected. So it's everyone's guess right now on when this might be resolved. Uh, we heard from some late night talk show hosts uh, last night at the Met Gala, and late night talk shows are expected to go dark immediately. Um, comedies and dramas might be able to finish out their seasons. What do you think the long term impact is on the average viewer? It'll be a while outside of those talk shows and, and also Saturday Night Live, for example, this week will now go dark, most likely. Uh, but a lot of shows have just ended their seasons. Uh, it is May, which is generally the time that the traditional TV season ends. Uh, but a lot of writers rooms were about to go back to work for next fall. Uh, so there could be a big delay in the fall TV programming lineup, especially to the traditional networks. The streamers have a little more shows uh, that, that are in their back pocket and on the shelf. So it may take a little longer for the impact to be felt over there. You know, I feel like this is just a, a touch, tough situation. You hear uh, we just heard in a soundbite about how the, the industry was able to bounce back after COVID. Um, but when you look at the numbers adjusted for inflation, the WGA says median writer produced pay has declined about 23 percent over the last decade. You have streaming services, AI concerns. Studios say times are tough. We've got all this headwind. But just a few days ago, we found out that CEOs got hefty pay raises. Last year, their compensation was an, on average about $32 million. I have to imagine that's a tough pill to swallow during negotiations. Yeah, those optics aren't good, and especially for, for those uh, figures to come out right after we've had a huge round of layoffs at companies like Disney and Amazon. Uh, that, it, that doesn't look good, and, and those, uh, those, those pay numbers that we've seen are, are pretty, pretty ridiculous. So uh, that didn't help things. Uh, 
we know we can look at history, right? The WGA strike back in 2007, it cost the state's economy uh, more than a billion dollars. It lasted, as Jamie mentioned, 100 days. The bigger picture here, the Directors Guild contract expires next month. SAG-AFTRA's contract expires soon after that. Is this going to embolden other unions in the industry to walk out as well? I think so. And I think going back to your first question, how long is this going to last? Because we do have the DGA and, and SAG negotiations coming up. It could last as long as at least those as well. So we could have an entire town uh, out on the picket line at some point. So this could be uh, going on for a while. And the differences on both sides are pretty significant. So there, there's going to have to be some major concessions by one party or the other before we can get back to work. Michael, thank you so much. Appreciate you being with us. And we do need to note that Paramount Global, which owns CBS and KCAL News, is part of the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. In addition, many of our KCAL News producers and writers are WGA members.